Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the AI Hardware Show 2023. Joining me as always, Sally from EE Times. And today's chips are all going to be sort of 90% of the market and then, and then a few that are not. NVIDIA Hopper is NVIDIA's next generation GPU architecture named after computer science pioneer Grace Hopper. It has quite a few interesting features. The new flagship Hopper GPU, called the H100, is one piece of silicon, no chiplets here. It's an almost vertical sized 80 billion transistor design. H100 offers between 3 and 6x the performance of the current generation A100. Connectivity got a big boost. H100 is the first GPU with HBM3, bringing its memory bandwidth to 3 terabytes per second. It's also the first GPU to support PCIe Gen 5. Overall, the chip has nearly 5 terabytes per second of external connectivity. Now, to put this into context, the connectivity of 20 H100 GPUs is roughly the same as all of global internet traffic today. <laughs> One of the tricks up Hopper's sleeve is the transformer engine, built for today's transformer networks, and NVIDIA's picked a new number format to balance throughput and accuracy for this workload, FP8. The transformer engine in the H100 can switch between 16-bit and 8-bit formats dynamically during training, so it can speed up layers that can handle reduced precision. For training transformer networks specifically, time to train can be reduced by roughly an order of magnitude or more, compared to the A100. With this latest generation, NVIDIA has also introduced what it calls superchips. It can combine a Hopper GPU with its 144-arm core Grace CPU on a module it calls Grace Hopper. This is really designed for giant scale AI and HPC, in other words, supercomputers. When the H100 becomes available in the first half of 2023, we expect it to become the new standard all other AI chips are measured against. So my only question, Sally, is how much, how much <laughs> is it going to cost? Have you won the lottery? Otherwise, uh, I don't think you want to know. The, the more you buy, the more you save? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so for my next chip, I'm going to talk about Intel's Luihi 2. Now, Luihi is a name I always get wrong, but we'll have a go. So Luihi 2, as the name suggests, is Intel's second Luihi chip. Luihi is their name for their neuromorphic architecture, doing neuromorphics in digital silicon. Now, what makes Luihi 2 special? It was arguably the first, I'm pretty sure it's the first because Intel's announced two chips on Intel 4, that use its EUV process node technology. Now, Everybody else is using EUV already. This will be in one of Intel's first EUV chip products. Unfortunately, it's more of a development chip for research, not a production chip. So we're likely to see this in systems provided to universities in order to do neuromorphic research. It's still not a product, but it focuses on asynchronous spiking neural networks. So the typical thing here is that you have a uh, an event that happens and the neural network works on the event. Things like a waking word may be a spiking neural network. However, Intel is doing research, Intel its partners are doing research to apply it to things like cameras. This new chip has roughly the amount, same number of synapses as the previous one, 120 million, but it has 1 million neurons, up to 8x over the first generation. It will be available for partners as a Heo Gulch, I'm butchering that, a Heo Gulch, which is a one chip PCIe card. There will also be Kapoho Point, which is an eight chip dual stacked board. Also built in are six x86 cores. So it's going to be interesting how those two work together. Sally. Israeli startup Halo was founded in 2017 by members of the Israel Defense Forces Elite Intelligence Unit. The startup went from concept to product in less than two years, releasing the Halo 8 in 2019. Halo 8 will be primarily used for computer vision tasks at the edge. It's an automotive and industrial grade chip capable of 26 tops at a power efficiency of 2.6 tops per watt. However, the typical power envelope is 2.5 watts. This chip doesn't use external memory. Instead, there are memory, control and compute blocks distributed throughout the chip. Not needing to send data off chip means energy can be saved. Halo uses a novel data flow architecture. Software analyzes the requirements of neural network layers and allocates the right memory, control, and compute resources so that subsequent layers are mapped closely together on the chip to minimize the distance data has to travel. 
With no hardware defined pipeline, the chip can support lots of different types of networks without any compression, tiling or sparsity. The chip can handle full HD image streams without downsampling. With the power efficiency the Halo 8 offers, it will be used across a variety of industrial edge applications, including industrial automation and video analytics, typically in some kind of edge box where feeds from multiple cameras are combined, where the company has a number of customers. Inspection is another popular use case for industrial. Halo is also serious about the automotive market for both driver assistance and autonomous driving, with the Halo 8 also qualified to automotive grade. And now for today's episode sponsor. A lot of the content on this channel wouldn't be possible without you, the supporters. Many thanks to all who support. And if you're interested in supporting, then we have Patreon, we have a merch store, I have a Substack newsletter, or simply just like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. So up next is Sam Manova. And this company you may not have heard of because Sam Manova's clients tend to be defense related and secretive. But Sam Manova features the CGRA architecture for focus prop backpropagation and machine learning training. CGRA stands for Coarse Grained Reconfigurable Array. And in Sam Manova's Cardinal, it splits the chip into dedicated areas for different operations. And they're all interlinked such that repeated compute and machine learning can be cycled across those elements without the need to synchronize or go off chip. It's a form of recursion that's very important in modern machine learning workloads. The big thing here is reducing the amount of data transfer, such that data flow communications are a lot simpler, saving bandwidth and power. Are you understanding that there are certain themes in some of these chips yet? Sam Manova is one of the top VC-funded AI companies, getting over $1 billion in funding for a $5 billion valuation. What we know so far is that a lot of their chips are currently being used by the Department of Defense, which kind of makes sense. DoD often has high compute requirements that change frequently. So a CGRA architecture is often spoken about in a very similar way to an FPGA architecture. Sam Bonova's Cardinal line started with the SN10, a 7 nanometer chip with 40 billion transistors and 1,280 CGRA units split 50-50 between compute and memory, and support for those quantized levels for machine learning down to intake. Each of those SN10s has six-channel DDR4 memory, and the company sells quarter racks, each with eight chips. SN10 was the previous generation, and they've recently announced SN30, their second generation. It has more than double the transistors at 86 billion, more memory channels, and each one is capable of 866 teraops of BF16 compute. Again, these are sold in quarter racks of eight chips, which Sam Manova often compares to a TGX A100 system. Gen on gen, Sam Manova is claiming a 2x to 6x improvement in performance. The human brain is the most power efficient computer we know of. Is it possible to directly copy how the brain works in silicon? This is what Dutch startup Inotera, amongst others in the neuromorphic field, is trying to do. Inotera's chip is designed to accelerate spiking neural networks, which are directly inspired by the brain. Neurons in the brain propagate information via analog voltage spikes. They send these spikes to each other, and then the information is encoded in the timing of the spikes. If multiple spikes arrive at a neuron at around the same time, that would signal a correlation of some kind. Spiking algorithms are a completely separate branch of AI, completely separate from deep learning, so the hardware is quite different. In a terrorist chip is mixed signal, in other words, while there are some digital elements, there are analog neurons that preserve the precise timing of the spikes, which conveys crucial information. The analog elements are also able to retain state information over time, and of course they are ultra, ultra low power. Neurons in Inotera's design have programmable synapses arranged in multi-level crossbar structure. The programmability helps mimic the complicated connections between biological neurons. In terms of energy, each spike requires less than 200 femtojoules in TSMC 28 nanometers, which is approaching the actual amount of energy that a biological neuron uses. Inotera says a typical audio keyword spotting application requires less than 500 spikes per inference, so we're expecting very deep sub-milliwatt performance. Unlike some other neuromorphic accelerator companies, Inotera is not processing images. They're focusing on time series data like audio, sound and speech recognition, um, but also radar and consumer and IT, IoT use cases like uh, vital signs monitoring. So the last chip I want to talk about today is Ampere's Ultra Max, which is more of a CPU, but it's also being used for AI. Ampere, not 
the Ampere architecture from NVIDIA, but Ampere Computing is formed out of the old Applied or Micro X Gene team and Intel's old Atom team. They are using ARM-based Neoverse uh, cores in their current generation uh, Mystique product. At the top end, you have an 80-core product at 3.3 gigahertz or 128 cores at 3.0. The 80-core product is called Ultra uh, Ampere Ultra, and the 128 core is Ampere Ultra Max. Now, one thing here, much with any other CPUs, is to do with performance. What Ampere is saying here is that they don't employ any sort of turbo functionality. What the customer uh, buys is what the customer gets. So when they say their chip runs at 3 gigahertz or 3.3 gigahertz, every core runs at that speed all the time. Now, with this chip, it's mostly used for scaling and services. If you ever heard of as a service and get really annoyed that everything is as a service, some of it is probably running on Ampere Ultra today. The main focus here is actually in the mobile gaming space, being able to provide lots of uh, mobile gaming services through Android across a server network. In terms of AI, if you're not running AI directly on the chip, it's also validated with NVIDIA for CUDA. So if you do want to get some of those A100s or the older V100s, or maybe even it might support the new H100s, then this is another CPU you can use alongside either an Intel or an AMD or a Grace. Ampere Ultramax also is a primary density play. You're putting 128 cores in a chip. You're putting four chips into a 1U. You can get 10,000 cores per rack. That's incredibly dense to what any other main CPU provider supplies today. Now, the Ampere Ultramax has been out in the market for a couple of years now, and Ampere has announced the next generation Ampere 1, codenamed Siren, built on TSMC 5 nanometer. We're expecting that to be announced in the next couple of quarters. So actually, this has been a really interesting episode. We've had NVIDIA, who control 90% of the training market. Yeah. Two neuromorphic chips. Two spiking chips, yeah. Yeah. Using different technologies to implement spiking. I mean, there, there are other people doing spiking neural networks, yeah. but just as you said, as a concept, they're so fundamentally different. It's just, a, it's all based on timing. It's a totally different idea, yeah. So very, very interesting from my perspective. So if you've enjoyed this episode... Stay tuned because we'll have the after show podcast coming later. There's a link in the description. If you're watching this after we've published them all, then please go see a playlist where you can go on to the next episode. Thanks, Sally. Thank you.